Welcome to New Story Kids Online Worship Service. I'm so glad you guys joined in. Now, I need everybody to put down their iPads, uh, what is it, NS, any devices, put that down, put it away. And I need you all to stand up. Don't be sitting down, sprawl around on your couch, okay? Everybody needs to stand up so we can worship together. All right, so everybody get ready to worship. Amen? This next song is called Ask, Seek, and Knock. And it actually comes from Matthew 7, 7, where if you ask, you will receive. If you seek, you will find. And if you knock, God will open up the door. So would you guys sing this song with me? Here we go. We're going to start by reading our B-I-B-L-E's. Here we go. I'm reading my B-I-B-L-E. Is what it says to me It tells me that I'm never ever alone I'm learning how G-E-S-U-S Came down to us and gave his best Without a doubt the best friend you'll ever know Our God knows exactly what I need So I remember this Let's go When you ask, he cares When you see when you knock, 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 God opens up the door. When you ask, He cares. When you see, He's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. Oh, oh. We're going to start from the top. We're reading our B-I-B-L-E's. Here we go. I'm reading my B-I-B-L-E. And this is what it says to me. It tells me that I'm never, ever alone. Make sure you're singing out loud. I'm learning how J-E-S-U-S came down to us and gave his best. Out of doubt, the best friend you'll ever know. Our God knows exactly what I need. So I remember this. Let's go. With your eyes, he cares when you see God opens up the door. When you ask, here we go. When you ask, He cares. When you seek, He's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the One door. One more time. When you ask, He cares. When you seek, He's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. Job, everyone you did great all right boys and girls make sure you sing it loud and proud the words are just as important as emotions okay so make sure you see here we go John 3 
job, everyone. You did awesome. Good job. Hi, friends. My name is Pastor Trisha, and I'm so glad you've joined me for worship today. We are going to start by playing a game called Go for Help. Can you yell go for help with me? It's one, two, three. Go for help. Good job. Now, here's how you play. Everyone watching at home can participate, including you grown-ups. All right? So I'm going to give you a situation where you would need to decide who you would go to for help. Let's see. I'm going to give you three choices. The first is mom. But this could really mean dad or grandma or any adult who takes care of you. Your second choice is map, because if you get lost, a map can definitely help you find your way. And your last option is medicine, because when you're sick, medicine can help you feel better. Okay, so now I want you to look around the room for three objects that are far apart from each other. It could be a sofa or a lamp, even a picture frame on a wall, okay? Did you find those three items? Let's see. I'm going to use this chair and that table and this drum that just happens to be right next to me. All right, and we're gonna assign each one a name. I think the drum is gonna be mom. Okay, and we will make the table medicine, oh, a map, and the last one we will give medicine. Okay, did you guys find your three objects? Do you know what they are? I'm gonna give you some time. All right, now everyone gather back into the center of the room. Pastor Sunny and Pastor Grace are actually gonna go play this game with me, so come on up. Now, I'm gonna ask you who you would go to for help in a specific situation, okay? So when you decide who you're gonna run to for help, that's the object you're going to run to inside your house. Ready? Here's the first question. Who do you go to for help if you're lost in a forest? Ready? Go! That's right. I don't know if many of you chose medicine, but I definitely know a map can help you out of the forest, right? Let's see. Here's the second question. Can we all gather back into the center of the room? Okay, everybody gather back. Grown-ups, I hope you're playing. All right, here's the second question. Who do you go to for help when you need help with science homework? Ready, go. Oh. You know, I guess Pastor Sunny might need some medicine when she's doing her science homework because it may make her head hurt. But I would go to, not my mom, but I would go to my husband because he's a science teacher and he can definitely help me with science homework. All right, ready for the third question? Let's all get back into the center. Now, the third question is, who do you go to for help when you're sick? Ready, go. Did you guys pick one? Okay. How many of you chose mom? Okay. How many of you chose medicine? Uh, I really hope no one chose a map because I don't know how that's gonna help you when you're sick. I'm standing kind of in the middle because I'll want medicine too when I'm sick, but my mom definitely helps me feel better when I'm sick. So I'm in the middle. Okay, last question. Everyone come back to the center of the room. Here is our very last question. Who would you go to for help when you're worried? Ready, go. <gasps> okay, so I don't know if some of you chose a map because I'm not quite sure how that's gonna help you when you're worried, but I chose mom and Pastor Sunny and Grace chose each other. That's actually a really good answer because talking to a friend or to an adult who loves you or even a parent will always make you feel better when you're worried. All right, good job playing that game. Thank you, Pastor Sunny and Pastor Grace. 
Good job. They did a good job, didn't they? You know, when you're worried, you can go to any adult who loves you, but you know who else you can turn to? You can always turn to Jesus. In fact, today we're going to hear a story about two sisters who were very worried about their sick brother, and they turned to Jesus for help, but they didn't get help exactly the way they were expecting. Let's find out what happened. Hi friends, Megan here, and this is Jessie. Hi. Jessie, are, are you crying? What's wrong? Well, my, my brother and I were playing in the yard and, and we found a turtle. He looked like he was hurt, so, so my, my mom thinks that uh, Mrs. Jones' mean old cat Felix got him. Oh no, what did you do? We put him in a box with, with rocks and grass and water to keep him safe. We even tried to feed him some carrots, but, but when I went to check on him this morning, he was dead. Oh, Jesse, I'm so sorry. Death is a terrible thing. It reminds us of how sin messed up the good world that God made. When Jesus comes back to earth though, he will make things right again. He will do away with sickness, sin, and death forever. He, he will? Yes, Jesus has power over death. Let me tell you a story today about how Jesus raised his friend Lazarus from the dead. A man named Lazarus lived in the land of Judea with his two sisters, Mary and Martha. Lazarus and Jesus were friends. One day, Lazarus got sick. Mary and Martha sent a message to Jesus. Lord, your friend Lazarus is sick, they said. Jesus said to his friends, the disciples, Lazarus's sickness will not end in death. This sickness will show how great God is and how great the Son of God is. Jesus did not go to see Lazarus right away. He stayed where he was for two more days. Then he told his friends, let's go back to the land of Judea. Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going to go wake him up. Jesus' friends thought that Lazarus was just resting, but Jesus said, Lazarus has died. By the time Jesus got to the place Lazarus had lived, Lazarus had been buried in a tomb for four days. Martha hurried to meet Jesus. Lord, if you had been here, my brother Lazarus would not have died. But Martha knew Jesus could do a miracle. I know God will give you whatever you ask from him, she said. Jesus said, your brother will rise again. Martha believed Jesus. She thought Lazarus would rise from the dead at the end of time. But Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He said that people who believe in him may die in their bodies, but God will raise them from the dead. Do you believe this? Jesus asked. Martha said, yes, Lord. I believe you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Then Martha went home to get her sister Mary. Mary came and fell at Jesus' feet. She said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother Lazarus would not have died. Mary was crying, and Jesus cried too. Mary took Jesus to the place where Lazarus was buried. It was a cave, and a big stone covered the opening. Jesus told the people to move the stone. The stone was moved out of the way. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. Lazarus came out of the tomb wrapped in linen and cloth. He was alive. Jesus said, Unwrap him and let him go. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. He showed that he has power over death. 
Jesus died on the cross for our sin and rose from the dead. Those who trust in Jesus will live forever with him. When Lazarus died, Mary and Martha thought his life was done. They thought that that was the end of his story. So when Jesus came to see them, they both said, if only you had come just a little bit sooner, you could have saved him. But Jesus knew something they didn't. He knew that Lazarus had to die so that God could be glorified. That just means God would get the credit for the amazing miracle Jesus was about to do. Jesus, Mary, and Martha, they went to Lazarus' tomb and they rolled the stone away. And Jesus called out into the tomb, come out, Lazarus. And you know what? Lazarus, who had been dead for a couple of days, came out. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Jesus performed this sign so that we would all know that he truly is the Son of God and that he has conquered death. Death is not the end for those who believe in Jesus. This also foreshadowed or gave us a hint about what was going to happen to Jesus when he died on the cross. When Jesus died for our sins, his story didn't end with death. He rose again three days later and proved to us all that he can defeat death. I know that when someone dies, it can be very sad and it's okay to be sad. But if they believed in Jesus, we can find hope and even joy in knowing that they will live forever with God in heaven. And if you believe in Jesus, you will get to see them again one day in heaven. Isn't that amazing? Our Bible memory verse for the past few weeks has been John 20, 31. Would you guys sing it with me right now? Let's try it. job singing. I think the Bible verse is so important. I want to read it to you one more time and you guys can read it along with me. Ready? John 20 31. These are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. All these signs that Jesus did, all the clues that Jesus gave us was so that we would know that he is the Son of God. And if we believe that, we will have life. Death will not be the end of our story. That is something we can truly celebrate. Would you guys pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for showing us in so many ways how you are the true Son of God. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins and for coming back to life to show us that death is not the end of your story. And it's not the end for our story either if we believe in you. Help us to know in our minds and our hearts that you truly are the Son of God. Thank you for loving us and for showing us the truth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, boys and girls, friends, thank you so much for joining us on New Story Kids Online. I cannot wait to see you next time. Have a good week. 